Yo, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today is going to be a bunch of quick tips and tricks concerning automation lines. Now for you newbies, an automation line is this red dotted line here that becomes solid when I hover over it. And you can also see a little ball near my pointer. And essentially what it means is I can automate any parameter to change its value over a certain amount of time. For instance, here I have the track volume set to automate from 0 dB to negative infinity dB and then jump back up to 0 dB. So if we listen to that, that's all it is. Now, there are a bunch more things that we can do with automation lines, and that's kind of the point of this video. So I'm just gonna just walk you through some of the things that I use the most. This isn't necessarily everything you can or should do with automation lines, or just some things that I use the most. The first thing is, is if you have two points that are at different values on the vertical axes, for instance, 0 dB and negative infinity dB. You can hover over the line in between those two points and hold down Alt on a Windows machine. And you will see that below my cursor, there is a little curved line. And that means I can now make a curved automation line. So as you can see here, my line is now curved. If I didn't do that and I clicked and dragged, I could make a linear slope on the automation line. So that's what that is. Another thing I can do is if I highlight a section of the audio here and I click slightly above or below the automation line, I can move that entire section. So here I've clicked above and you can see that that entire section is moving and that will keep the automation you already have in relatively. So here I've got an automation point going from zero dB to negative infinity dB to negative 15 dB. Now, if I wanna move everything together, I just have to highlight that section and click above or below and move up or down and you can see that it's going to keep that that sort of motion going but it's just going to increase or decrease the automation for whatever parameter I am automating. Another helpful thing to know is that when a parameter doesn't have any automation it's going to be a perforated or dotted line and when it does have some automation it's going to be a solid line. Now when I'm just zoomed out to this sort of loop right here it's not a big deal but when I'm zoomed in and I've got a you know 10 minute long track and I'm just looking right here I instantly know that the speaker on off which is the parameter that's selected here doesn't have any automation on and I can also know even if this is a flat line let me see if I zoom out, put some automation here. If I zoom in, now I know that somewhere along this line, there is some automation. And that's really helpful, especially if you're zoomed in or your tracks are really long or anything like that. That's some basic stuff. Another thing is, let's say I really like this section of automation here. And I wanna duplicate that section of automation, but I don't wanna duplicate the actual MIDI track here. Here I have a drum set and as you can see this is different from this. However if I wanted to duplicate this automation and I select it and then hit Control D, it's duplicated the automation and the MIDI. And let's say I don't want to do that, I just want to duplicate the automation. What I can do is come over here to this little plus symbol and drop it down on its own independent channel. So now if I hide like that and duplicate it, I've duplicated that automation, but I haven't duplicated the MIDI for the channel. And that's going to work the same with a MIDI channel or an audio channel. And that's also really helpful if you want to delete a section of automation. So let's say I like this dip right here and I like this dip right here, but I don't want any of this automation going on in, the, in between here. So what I can do now when it's on its own channel is I can highlight that and hit delete and now I have uh, a section to deal with. And let's say I wanted to bring that up to negative 1.751. I could just click and drag and pull over and the highlighted section will stop me from going any further than it. So my highlighted section won't let me go over any further. I'm trying, but I can't go over any further to the left right here. And same with the right right here. That highlighted section is the box that I'm um, stuck to. So here I've got it to negative two dB. Let me make it a little bit bigger for us to see. Uh, as you can see, I'm in negative two dB. And over here, I'm at negative 1.751. Now I wanna move it to negative two, so I'm a little bit more precise. If I click, oops. If I click and drag this point now, 
Oh, I can get to negative two. However, if I click point and drag up or down, you'll see that it's jumping every 0.2 or 0.3 dB. And that's not always what you want. Sometimes you want it more precise. And what you can do is hold down control or command. And now it will go down 0.1 every time. So as you can see, it's moving much more slowly. It's moving by 0.1 dB instead of the two or three uh, when I'm not holding the control or command key. But anyway, that's a few of the tricks that I like to use when I'm working with automation lines. I know it was short, I know it was sweet, but I hope you learned something new. And anyway, we'll see you next time. Peace.